In this video, we will give a context-free grammar that generates language L, which is the set of strings a to the 2n, b to the n plus 1, where n is greater than or equal to 0, and then we're going to convert the grammar into Chomsky normal form. So first, let's think about what um, kinds of strings are in this language. So I have 2n a's followed by n plus 1 b's. So if n is 0, what do I have? I just have a b, right? That's 2 n a's, 0 a's, and then 0 plus 1 b, so I have a b. If n is 1, I have 2 n a's, so I have 2 a's, and then 1 plus 1 b's, a, a, b, b. And then if n is 2, this is where it starts really looking like the form, I have 4 a's, and then I have 2 plus 1, 3 b's. 2, 3, and if n is 3, I'm going to start using shorthand. I would have 6 A's and then 4 B's. Okay, so what's the idea here? Well, if we look at this one, this one's really easy to see. For every B, I have 2 A's and then I have some final B. Okay, so I can either think of this one as being the final B or I could think of working from the outside in, so for every B I make two A's, and then I make a final B. So it's two different approaches, and they both should work. So let me give you grammars for both of them, and then we'll see about doing both of them into Chomsky normal form. So let's call this G1. So this is the method where we have this final B on the end. Okay, and actually we're going to end up making it first. So if I start at my start variable and I make 1b right off the bat, I make that nb, then what does my a variable do? It makes two a's for every b. And then it goes back. So a, 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 b. Okay, so once I make my, my first b, now I make this a, that a, and that b and then I could do it again, this A, this A, and that B. And then at some point I want to terminate. So I go to epsilon. Okay, so that's one grammar to generate this language. And the other grammar is this method, the second method, where we're going to start from the outside in and then eventually make the final B. So let's call G2. Let's have s goes to, so we want to make two a's and then a b, and at the end when we're done, we want to make the final b. Okay, so this grammar would make a, a, b, and then a, a, b, and then we're, when we're ready, our last replacement would be to replace s with b, so that would make our final b. Okay, so two different grammars to do the same thing. Let's start with grammar two and convert it to Chomsky normal form. So I'm just gonna put it on a new screen. So S goes to A, A, S, B, or B. Okay, so step one is to make a new start variable to avoid a recursive start variable. So here that's really a problem. The start variable is recursive, so we need to make a new one. So let's call it S0. And what does S0 do? It just goes to S. So now S is no longer the start variable, it's just another, so it doesn't matter that it's recursive, it just matters that the start variable is not recursive. Okay, so there's our updated grammar. Okay, step two would be to eliminate epsilon rules unless it's start variable goes to epsilon. Okay, that's the exception to that. We don't have any epsilon rules, so we have nothing to eliminate. Okay, so this is turning out to be a pretty nice grammar, right? We have very little that we have to do. So we don't have to do that step, it's already done. Step three 
is to eliminate unit rules. Okay, so a unit rule is something of the form A goes to B. Okay, we do have one of those, S0 goes to S. Okay, so how do we eliminate unit rules? Um, anytime A could go to B, A could go to whatever B went to. So in our grammar, S0 goes to S, and then if we immediately replace S with AASB, then we could do that replacement right away. We could do S0 goes to AASB, so that's what we're going to do. So we replace the rule S goes to S, sorry, S0 goes to S with what S could go to. It could go to AASB, or it could go to B as well. Okay, we still have this rule, S goes to AA, S, B, or B, right? Because the first rule uses the variable S, so I have to make sure that I keep that rule. That rule can't go away. Okay, but now I have no more unit rules. I have no more rules that are, is a variable on the left-hand side, a variable on the right-hand side, right? Like A to, A to B. So we're done eliminating unit rules. So step four is basically just convert remaining into proper form. Okay, what's the proper form? It says if I have a variable on the right hand side, I better have two of them. A goes to B, C. I can't have A goes to B. I already got rid of all those unit rules. I don't want to bring any back. So I can have two variables on the right hand side or I can have a single terminal on the right hand side. So that's the form we want. Okay, so if we look at our first rule, I have AASB. So one way that I can convert this is by um, making two new variables, let's call them U and V. Okay, the second part, S0 goes to B, actually does match this form, so we don't need to touch that part. So now let me say what U does. And we're going to have to do this in a couple steps. U goes to AA and V goes to SB. Okay, so that's what that's going to do. So U here is just replacing AA and V is replacing SB in the original, in the first line, in the S0 line. And then I need to keep, again, my S rule, but it does the same thing. It went to AA, so I already have a variable for that, I have U, and it went to SB. I have a variable for that. It's called V or B. This part, S goes to B, is in the proper form, so that's fine. Okay, so we're most of the way there. We fixed our S0 and S rules, but now we have two new rules, U goes to AA and V goes to SB that aren't in the proper form, so I need to fix those now. So let's put them down here. So the rules that are fine, let me copy them down, U, V, or B, S goes to U, V, or B. Okay, U goes to AA. What I want you to go to is either a single terminal or two variables. So let me introduce a new variable called A. Let me let it generate the little a. And so now you can go to AA. And it does the same thing it did before with one extra step. Okay, so now I've taken care of U. V goes to variable S and then little or terminal little b. I want V to go to two variables, so let's introduce a new variable called B, and it's just going to go to little b. And then V, let's see if I can fit it, oh, nope, nope, can't fit it there. It's going to have to go over here. So V went to S, and then I'm replacing little b with the big B. Remember, big B is going to make that little b, so it's still doing the same thing. So let's check that we took care of everything. We still had this rule. We fixed this one by introducing the big A variable. We fixed SB. V goes SB, yep, by introducing this B. And then I still have this one, which was already in the proper format. So if we look down here, everything is in the right form. Every rule either has two variables on the right-hand side or a single terminal. And I haven't lost anything. That's also important. It's not just important that it looks right. It's important that you don't uh, accidentally drop any strings that you would have made in the old grammar or make any new strings in the new grammar that you didn't make in the old grammar. So we want to just check and it looks good. Okay, so this was a pretty nice grammar. It was very easy to convert. 
Um, let's say that you were unlucky and the grammar that you made at first wasn't quite so nice. So let's do this one more time with another grammar just for the extra practice. So the other grammar was S goes to AB, A goes to little a, little a, A, B, or epsilon. Okay, so there's our grammar. Okay, so step one was the new start variable to avoid a recursive start variable. Um, here, we don't actually need to do this because the start variable isn't recursive, but remember if this was being performed by a computer, if this is an algorithm, it's a procedure, the computer doesn't necessarily know that, right? So let's do it anyway. Let's follow all the steps. So S0 goes to the new variable S, I'm sorry, the new variable S0 goes to S. S still goes to A little b. A goes to A, 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 B, or epsilon. Okay, so there's our new start variable. Step two was to remove these epsilon rules. Any rule that has epsilon where it's not appearing uh, with the start variable, right? So we do have some of these that we need to take care of. What we need to do is, is A is nullable. The variable A is nullable. I can, I can replace it with epsilon. So every rule where I have A on the right hand side, I want to create a new rule that has A being nulled, basically. So what happens if I were to delete A? So this one isn't affected. This one is, so I could go to A, B, or what if A was epsilon? Then I would just go to B. So that's nulling out A in that rule. And then here, I can do A, 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 B. Now what does this look like if I were to replace A with epsilon in say the final, um, the final step? It would be just A, A, B. That's nulling out A. Okay, so notice I haven't changed the grammar. Uh, I've changed what it looks like, but I haven't changed what it creates. I've just thrown in the rule for what I would get if I were to um, null out A. So in some derivation, if I'm doing A goes to A, A, big A, B, and then epsilon, it's the same thing as saying A goes to A, A, B. Okay, so that removes my epsilon rules. Three. Uh, we need to remove unit rules. So remove unit rules. Okay, the only unit rule that we have is S0 goes to S. So what we're going to do is replace S on the right hand side with whatever it is that S could create, which is A, B, or B. Okay, so now I'm going to notice this rule here downstairs, so let me go and finish the rest of that grammar. Um, in the new grammar, there is nothing that creates S. There, I can't um, ever create the variable S from the start variable S0. Okay, so now actually S is a unreachable variable. I can't ever create it. So I can actually drop the rule uh, that starts with S on the left hand side because it's never going to show up in a derivation. Okay, so I just simplified the grammar a little bit. Okay, but notice I still did all the steps in order. So I would have had, um, I could have had a part of the procedure here that says, check to see what variables are reachable. If they're not reachable, then delete them. Okay, that's basically what we did. So then step four is to put remaining in proper form. Okay, so first, uh, let's look at the first rule, S0 goes to AB. Again, the right-hand side rule is fine. So S0 goes to, I'm just going to leave that part, a little space for that. This part's fine, but the big A, little b is not fine because I have a mix of variables and terminals. So let me get a new variable b. And so now S0 can go to big AB, and big b is going to make that little b. 
Okay, so I haven't changed anything. I've just added a new variable that handles creating that terminal. And I want to do something similar for the rule a goes to uh, little a, little a, a, b. But how are we going to do this? So I need to only have two variables on the right hand side. So I can't do something like a goes to u, a, b, right? I already have that variable b to create the little b. I can't just make a u to make a, a, because then I would have three variables on the right hand side. So we can't do that. So let's, um, let's make a new variable anyway. Let's call it u. And let's have that guy for now make little a, little a. And let's make a new variable b, v and let's have that one make big A, little b. Okay, I'm gonna put the rest of my grammar down here. So now, what does my A rule look like? I replaced little a, little a with u, and then I'm substituting in v for the AB part. And then again, u for little a, little a, and then b, actually, big B makes little b. So there we go. Okay, so we're almost there. Uh, I have to fix rule V and rule U. They're not in the proper order, or I should say the rules that start with them. So let me make some space, and we're gonna continue at the top here. So let me copy down the rules that are fine. A, B, or B. A is now fine. U, V, or U, B. Okay, B is fine. All right, so u is not fine. I have two terminals and I need either two variables or a single terminal. So let's make another new variable. Let's call it w. And let's have it make that little a. So now what does u make? It makes two w's and each w makes an a. So we've handled u. All right, so what does v need to do? V makes a and then a little b. Well, we already have something, a variable that makes a little b, it's a big b. And so we can just have v go to a, b, and then that big b will make the little b. Okay, so we should be done now. Let's look. Everything has either two variables on the right hand side or a single terminal, so it looks like it's in the proper form. And we were very careful as we were going through to make sure we were keeping track of what the old grammar made and, and have a proper replacement in the new grammar in Chomsky normal form. So we shouldn't have created anything that wasn't in the original grammar. So this should be correct, but I'll leave it up to you to double check.